Every year, tens of thousands of people drive past the iconic Jones Beach water tower. But few know about the man whose name and legacy has left an indelible mark on the Long Island landscape. So let's discover the story of Major Thomas Jones. A soldier, a sailor, a whaler, a sheriff, and perhaps even a pirate, Thomas Jones was a complex man of many talents, whose story begins a long way from the shores of Long Island, across the Atlantic, and all the way back to 17th century Ireland. The 17th century wasn't a particularly good time for Ireland. Between 1641 and 1691, the island suffered through two civil wars, which killed hundreds of thousands of people and sent many others into exile. Thomas Jones was born right in the middle of all this. Born in 1665 in Strabane, a town in Northern Ireland, little is known of Thomas's early years except that his mother was possibly an Irish heiress and his father a Welshman. We may never know the circumstances of his youth, but when civil unrest once again came to tear apart Ireland, we do know that, whatever his reasons, Thomas picked up arms and marched off to war. In 1685, King James II came to the English throne. This was the time when Ireland was ruled by the English king. James was a Catholic who believed in religious tolerance, but he had a strong admiration for King Louis, who ruled France as an absolute monarch. This, however, did not sit well with the Protestant Parliament, who wanted to maintain their newly strengthened power following the English Civil War. To make matters worse, in 1688, James had a son. Parliament saw this as a crisis, as fears rose of a Roman Catholic dynasty sitting on the English throne for years to come. So, Parliament offered the throne to a Protestant, William of Orange. William of Orange was seen as the perfect choice not only was he the nephew of the king, but he had also married James's daughter, Mary, who had been next in the line of succession before the birth of her brother. William moved quickly. He gathered financial support and invaded England with a large army. After only two battles and anti-Catholic riots in several towns, James was forced to run away to France. Many in Scotland and Ireland believe that James was wrongfully deposed, especially the Roman Catholic populations in those two kingdoms. These supporters of King James became known as Jacobites, and Thomas Jones was one of them. However, being a Protestant, Thomas Jones was most likely fighting for the belief that James was the rightful king and the parliament had overstepped its authority. Whatever his reasons, we do know that Thomas Jones fought for the Jacobite cause in Ireland. After the Jacobites took control of most of Ireland, James saw an opportunity to regain the English throne, and with a small army of French soldiers, he sailed to Ireland. As a young man in his mid-twenties, Thomas Jones would find himself surrounded by war. To the north of Strabane, King James and his army were besieging the town of Derry. And to the south, a Protestant force based out of Enniskillen were raiding the countryside. Because the Jacobite army under King James had made an attempt to remove all Protestants from its ranks, there's good evidence to suggest that Thomas Jones was part of the cavalry force known as Abercorn's Horse. Sometime around July 1689, Claude Hamilton, the fourth Earl of Abercorn, raised a regiment of horse in the area around Strabane, and Thomas Jones most likely joined this regiment. If so, his first experience in battle would have been during the Enniskillen expedition. Under the overall command of Lord Monk Cashel, 3,000 men advanced from Dublin, northwest, to wipe out the pocket of resistance in the town of Enniskillen. They were met by approximately 2,000 Protestants at the Battle of Newtown Butler. On July 31st, 1689, the Jacobite cavalry stumbled into a Protestant ambush and were routed, sustaining around 230 casualties. One of those casualties was Claude Hamilton. Monkeshel's army formed up on a hill, forcing the Protestants to attack uphill and over boggy terrain. This should have been a strong defensive position, but due to a single miscommunicated order, the Jacobite troops threw down their weapons and fled the battlefield. Up to 1,500 of the Jacobite soldiers were cut down or drowned, while what remained of the cavalry fled to safety. The expedition was a complete disaster. For the next year, the Jacobites consolidated their territory and destroyed crops and livestock in the north of Ireland until William took personal command of the Protestant army. 
On June 14, 1690, 300 ships arrived in Belfast, carrying an army of almost 31,000 men. On July 1st, the two competing monarchs met at the Battle of the Boyne, where they squared off to determine, once and for all, who would sit on the English throne. The Jacobite army of James II numbered 23,500, mostly Irish Catholics reinforced by 6,000 French troops. His Irish infantry was mainly untrained using outdated matchlock muskets, but the cavalry would play an important role in the battle. Facing James was an international army of around 36,000 soldiers equipped with the latest flintlock muskets. Crucially, Williams commanded eight times more artillery than James. The bulk of the fighting occurred over the main ford across the Boyne River. With their superior firepower, Williams' men were able to force their way across the river, but they were immediately pinned down by the Jacobite cavalry. And it's possible that Thomas Jones fought here. Fierce fighting scattered most of Williams' men and drove them back into the river, while Williams' cavalry managed to cross the river under heavy fire and arrive in enough strength and force the Jacobites into retreat. Although defeated, the Jacobite army retired in good order, while their cavalry, specifically Abercorn's horse, covered their retreat. While James II fled to France, what remained of his army fled to the city of Limerick. Thomas Jones, along with the remaining Jacobites, would continue to fight on in Ireland for more than a year. Suffering through two sieges in the city of Limerick and a bloody defeat at the Battle of Aughram, which would later be described as quite possibly the bloodiest battle ever to have been fought on the British islands. By this point, the Jacobites were broken and bled dry. In October of 1691, they finally surrendered and signed the Treaty of Limerick. Under the terms of the treaty, Thomas Jones, along with some 15,000 Irish, were allowed to retain their arms and withdraw to France, an event that would become known as the Flight of the Wild Geese. This would bring an end to Thomas Jones' career as a soldier in the service of the king, but it would be the beginning of a new chapter in Thomas Jones' life, one that would take him to the high seas where he would gain the reputation as a pirate and journey all the way to the new world. But that's a story for another time. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out part two as I continue the story of Major Thomas Jones.